for around about the last 15 years from members of my family and members of my friend who are like, oh, you've made such terrible life choices. You have to watch. They don't talk like that. That sounds like some kind of animal about to attack you. <laughs> We're still in the same situation. None of us can actually leave our houses. And if you do, you will be judged accordingly because we're trying to stop a global pandemic from basically taking all of our lives and pushing us into the floor. But my name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for joining me here on my YouTube channel. I thought, well, what we can do, while we can't talk about specific workouts you can do in the gym or ways to do this and ways to do that, because we're all basically just finding out ways to train at home at the moment, unless you're very lucky and have a home gym. Uh, again, I've got a load of videos about that, which you can check out. I thought, well, we can educate ourselves and make sure that when we can re-enter fitness society and go back to fitness facilities, we all have learned a little thing about how muscles work, about how muscles grow, and bodybuilding, and CrossFit, and whatever else you want. So I went through my own brain. Basically, I've been lifting weights for a long time. Love it. So I make videos about it. That's about it. I went through my own brain, and I thought, one of the questions I've been asked over the years, where I look at someone like they've just slapped my mother, and we're basically going to put these fitness myths to bed. Also, shout out to Mrs. Miller. She's a lovely woman. Let's just get on with it. Number 10 is, oh, if you stop working out, all that muscle is going to turn into fat. I have had this for around about the last 15 years from members of my family and members of my friend who are like, oh, you've made such terrible life choices. You have to watch that. Don't talk like that. That sounds like some kind of animal about to attack you. However, the point is, that's like me. I should have got a pencil. I don't have one. I have a microphone. That's like me saying, I'm going to take this microphone and turn it into diamonds. I can't because the molecular structure and the molecules and whatever, they're two completely different things and it's not going to work. So you can't turn fat into muscle and you can't turn muscle into fat. So I get it. Your first question is, or your first retort is, but Simon, I have seen people that stop lifting weights and now they're tubby packs of goo. I don't want to be like that. Well, you have to adjust your lifestyle. And what a lot of people do who are very serious about the gym and then stop going is they carry on with the diet, which is going to be very high in calories and all of that. And they enter a calorie surplus. And that's why they get fat. It's not fat turning into muscle. It's muscle going away because they're not training it anymore. And it's fat arriving because they're eating 7,000 calories a day and just sitting their ass on the couch, which you are allowed to do. I mean, especially at the moment, right? Hands up whose diet's been terrible over the last week or so. My hand is up. And it's the same the other way around too. Like you're going to get some personal trainers who are going to say, I can turn all that fat into muscle. No, what they're going to do is they're going to reduce your muscle by putting you in a calorie deficit. And then maybe they'll give you a new plan where you build muscle on top. But they are absolutely two separate things. You can't turn fat into muscle and you can't turn muscle into fat. Number nine is you can target fat burn like you're some kind of sniper. And you're like on the top of a roof and you're gonna target fat burn. You can't. So many people say, how do I get rid of my love handles? Or how do I get rid of my chicken wings or bingo wings, whatever the hell people call them? You can't. You just have to, again, enter yourself into the right state of preparation with food and training and whatnot, doing cardio and all these things. And then your body will respond accordingly. Like, I think when you look at it statistically, men hold a lot of fat in their chest. I think I'm right in saying that. And obviously, everyone's got the dreaded, the dreaded like bagel ring <laughs> around their waist that we want to get rid of. And maybe you'll be very lucky and you'll be someone that gets rid of that early. And maybe you won't. Like, I carry a lot of fat in my ass. I just do. I pretend, well, I like to squat. And I have such a big squat that I have such a big ass. I mean, I do squat, but I imagine the reason I have a big ass is because, again, that's where I store a lot of my fat. We're all different. That comes down to you and your genetics and stuff like that. But if anybody tells you I can get rid of those love handles, no, there is a one-stop shop in terms of, no, there's multiple ways to do it. But there is no way just to target in on a singular piece of fat from going to the gym. Maybe there's some kind of medical laser thing you can do, like you're in a James Bond movie, but I've never heard of it, and it sounds terrifying, and therefore I wouldn't be interested. Number eight is don't work out on an empty stomach, or you should work out on an empty stomach. You, you, look, choose which one you like to do. You can find studies. It's like when we go on Google, right? We're basically looking for our own opinions and our own ideas to be backed up. And you can find studies that say that, yes, if you train on an empty stomach, you will target fat ban. And you can find studies that say, oh, actually, if you train, you know, uh, I can't which way I'm going. Now, basically, if you have food beforehand, that's okay. If you don't have food beforehand, that's okay. Just figure out what works for you. But again, that is not a, a be-all and end-all. Like loads of people enjoy doing uh, intermittent fasting and a lot of intermittent fasting diets say you eat, um, you train first and then you get all your food in, whereas other people will say, no, get up, make sure you get some fuel, get some fuel and so on and so forth. So 
don't buy into that thinking that there's only one way to train. There's not. There's many, many different ways to train, and it's very important you find the right one for you. Number seven, no pain, no gain. Yeah, because we've got to go in there. We've got to be manly men, and everybody else has got to leave. I mean, that's old, out-of-date nonsense. Everyone should go to the gym. It's cool, it's fun, if you like it, that's what matters. Or don't go. If you don't like it, don't go. Don't waste your life. But DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, which is essentially where you've broken your muscle down, and it's going, oh, my muscle hurts has become a barometer about whether you trained hard enough. And it's great. DOMS is great because you do have a signifier, a really easy one. You flex your biceps and you feel they hurt. You go, sweet, I must have worked hard enough. But it does not matter if they don't. You can find Olympic athletes, Olympic athletes, who will tell you they haven't had delayed onset muscle soreness in years because that's not how they train. It's not how they train. So if you get it, good, that's great. Again, it's really good because you can use it as an indicator about when to train again. Because if that calms down, you think, oh, maybe the muscle has repaired itself. And if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Look in the mirror. Look at the scales. You know, use other things you have at your disposal to see if you are progressing and evolving as a fitness dude or a fitness girl. And that's it. It doesn't matter. It's a good thing to get. And also, when you first start training, you're probably going to get it more than when you become an advanced lifter. But don't hang everything on that. It's a waste of time. And you'll probably start training in stupid ways just to try and get delayed onset muscle soreness. Just let it happen or let it not happen. And just be happy with what you're seeing. And if not, go find other things you can do to change up what you're doing. Number six, you will die if you don't stretch before you lift weights. Again, I think you should kind of make this up in your own world. But there are studies out there that will tell you, actually, if you stretch before working out, not only does it make the muscle weaker, but it also makes the muscle a little more unsteady. So you may actually get injured. I stretch after working out. I think that's better as part of a warm down to make sure you're all loosey goosey. But I, I don't think it's a massively big deal if you just feel a bit more confident stretching beforehand. But the rule that you often see, especially online, is you must. They slam the table like that and ruin the video. You must stretch before you work out. Otherwise, your arm will fall off. And then what are you going to do? You have one left bicep and your right bicep will run away down to the down to the lake. It's just not true. As long as you feel warm and ready, just make. I think if you don't want to stretch... Make the use of warm-up sets. So if you're going to be working chest that day and you're doing bench press to start with, just take the bar, rep out 20. Then try and maybe get to the point you're doing 60% of what your proper sets would be and just make sure you're going sort of 8 to 10 to 12 reps. Just put your muscles in a state of preparation for the actual exercise you're going to do as opposed to like sticking your arm over your neck and going, oh, because someone on the internet told you you had to stretch. Again, if it makes you feel confident, great. But just be careful. That's what you got to do. Be careful. Be smart. Number five is heavy weights to bulk, high reps to cut. I've never understood this in a million years. Like you send brain power to your muscles going, oh, we're bulking now. It goes, okay. Oh, we're cutting. Now. Okay. Diet is going to take control of that more than anything. I think I've said this on another video. But if you're about to shed a load of weight and you're going to try and lose all your fat and you don't want to lose muscle, which is what we try and do when we get cut up, when we get lean... The best way to do that is to keep your lifts as strong as they can possibly be because that's another great signifier that you're not losing strength. And nine times out of 10, if you're not losing strength, you probably haven't lost muscle mass either. So if you're doing a 200 kilogram deadlift and then you shed 10 pounds and you're still doing a 200 kilogram deadlift, you can probably look at yourself in the mirror and go, ah, oh, sweet gov, we are now at the same muscle mass that we were, but we dropped all this fat. You should always be changing things up because your body's very smart and it gets used to things and you need to shock your body into growth, essentially. But that is not... It's the same for women as well. It's the same for women. There's so many articles that go, women do heavy weights, are going to become... Oh, no, no, you're not. If only that was true, I would love that. I'd be the happiest man ever and I'd do heavy weights all the time. That is not how it works. Again, it comes down to food intake and it comes down to so many other things, genetics being a huge one too. But if you want to lift heavy weights, great. If you want to do high reps, great. Just, again, choose the thing that you want to do at the time and then make sure you've got a plan in 6 to 8 to 12 weeks where you change things up and keep doing that. But that one is stupid. Number four, you can't work out when you're sick. Now, let's begin, before we get anywhere, let's proceed this one by saying, listen to your body. In fact, that's just great advice for lifting weights and bodybuilding in general. Listen to your body. If you feel like you shouldn't be training, don't train. But the science behind it is if you have like a cold from the neck upwards, so sore throat, runny nose, bit of a headache, you're probably fine to go to the train. You're not going to smash your immune system too much and you'll get away with it. And a lot of people like doing that, myself included. If it's from the neck down, so chesty or whatever else, you probably need to rest. You then will sink your immune system and you're going to make it worse. It's a nice, simple equation. Again, that's a very general rule and you have to apply it to yourself. Like again, if your eye is hanging out, it's socket. Don't go to the gym, even though it's above the neck. But by and large, you'll be all right. Number three, if you sweat in the gym, you're out of shape. 
This isn't true. I'm keeping this one nice and simple. You can find most studies that will tell you, actually, the fitter you are, the more you sweat because your body is more apt at controlling temperature, and that is all sweating is. Again, if you're doing loads of cardio and you're sweating, it doesn't mean you're burning more fat. It just means your body is trying to regulate the temperature. That's all sweating is. Number two, creatine makes you fat. Or creatine is a steroid. These are the two things. So even though you can buy it from Holland and Barrett, a very reputable, I don't know if they're America or not, but they're a very reputable store over here in the UK. You know, sell a lot of good things. Apparently they're selling steroids, according to the rumors, and it will make you fat. It's not a steroid. It's something that already exists inside of you. You're just supplementing it, so you're increasing your levels. And two, it doesn't make you fat. It can make you hold on to water weight which again is why you should test it and figure out if it's for you because while it will make you a teen a little bit stronger and improve your performance, maybe you don't enjoy the bloat essentially that it gives you. That's that. You have put on weight. It's water weight. It's not creatine. Creatine doesn't make you fat. And number one, to lose weight, you have to drop carbs. And I throw this one in for all the lovely comments. I go, Simon just says the same thing all the time. Well, so do you in the comments. So you and I should be best friends. Rubbish. You can eat all the carbs in the world. You already know what I'm going to say. As long as you're burning more calories off than you're taking in. You can eat 72 pizzas, but if you're burning off the equivalent of 73 pizzas, you will lose weight. It has nothing to do with proteins, fats, carbs. You need to eat things in well balance. You know all this. I'm not going to tell you, but they are not your enemy. You can eat them. The Atkins diet has a lot to answer for. Again, if you want to drop carbs because it's a good way to diet and you enjoy it. Hey, ho, my friend, you go nuts, but that is not a 100% rule. Need to stop banging the table. And that's that. That's a bunch of gym myths that we need to expunge forever because they're nonsense. I appreciate you joining me. I also hope everyone's doing okay in these crazy times. If you give me a subscribe, that'd be awesome. My numbers go up. It gives me self-worth. And the same with hitting the like button. If I get a lot of likes, I'm like, oh, people like me. I am but a scared child inside as we all are. If you'd like to take that step further, patreon.com forward slash simonmiller316. There's a link in the description below. A bunch of rewards that I can send out. Some physical, so you actually receive something in the post. It's just a way to sustain this YouTube channel because I don't make any money out of it, as I've said before. But mostly, I appreciate your view. I appreciate your click. And I'll see you on the next one.